I'm Richard, and I'm going to show you how to get started with integrating Terminal API. So before we jump into development, let's take a look at what this hardware can do. Square Terminal is a portable, all-in-one device that accepts cards via swipe or dip. For contactless payments, you can also tap a phone, card, or watch. The thermal printer doesn't even need ink to print receipts. Terminal API lets you connect to this Square-built hardware to initiate a payment checkout. Since the checkout flow is controlled from the server side or backend, we can initiate a checkout flow from any other internet connected device. To demonstrate this, let's go ahead and look at a checkout being initiated from my command line terminal. First, I'll paste in this curl command that I have to show you how easily we can start a checkout. You can see this is just a basic HTTP post request and that we're just passing in amount, currency, some device options, and an item potency key. So let's pipe this curl request into JQ to make the response easy to read. We can see that it's created a checkout and that the status is pending. So let's take a look at my friend's terminal device. Our terminal is now prompting for a payment method. Let's go ahead and pay using my cash card by tapping here. So that's super simple from a developer perspective. We were able to make a request to have a terminal take a payment from our command line. So that's where we're going to be working toward today. Now that we've showed it just takes a curl command to push a payment once everything is set up, let's go through what the development process is and how we get set up with the Terminal API. For today, we're just going to connect the terminal to our own account, since that is likely what you will do when testing this in your developer environment. The first step we'll take is to set up our webhooks. This allows us to see events that happen as we move through the entire Terminal API flow. Next, we'll connect a terminal device using the device's API. Finally, we'll create a checkout on our connected terminal and verify processing a payment. So let's jump into the first step of setting up our webhooks. We're going to use webhook.site to set up a webhook URL to easily see those events. Here, the events we care about are the device paired and terminal events. Let's go ahead and copy that URL to our clipboard, then go into our Square Developer dashboard to the webhook section of our app. We'll go ahead and click Add Endpoint, and let's name this webhook endpoint Terminal Webhook. For the URL, we'll just paste in the URL we got from webhook.site. Then we'll update the API version to the latest if it's not already set there. Next, we'll select device.code.paired, terminal.checkout.created, and terminal.checkout.updated. You can optionally select the payments events since those will also be triggered when a payment is processed. But for now, we're just going to focus on the main terminal API events. We can now save our webhook. Just to show how this works, I'll go ahead and show a test event. So we'll click on Terminal Webhooks to pull open our endpoint details. Go ahead and click More and then Send Test Event. We'll send a device code paired event. Let's switch back to webhook.site to see what shows up there. We can see the events are sending and it looks just like the data that showed up in our Square Developer Dashboard. Now that we have our webhook set up to see events coming through, we can connect a terminal device using the device's API. If you wanted to set up a terminal device without using the API, you would just log into your device using your Square username and password. But with the device's API, we can instead use a device code. The device's API gives us a way to programmatically generate those device codes used for connecting the terminal device. This is especially useful when you're using an OAuth access token on behalf of a seller since that lets you generate a code for the seller to connect the terminal device to their own Square Seller account. So let's go take a look on our command line to connect our terminal using the device's API. Here, we have a curl command for making a call to the device's API. We are showing all of the available fields that we can set, but the only two that are required fields are the product type field and the item potency key field. The name field is something that will show up in the seller's dashboard for that device, so you'll want to be sure that you put something recognizable here but again, this field is still technically optional. Also, if you admit the location ID field, it will automatically default to the main location for the seller account that the request is being made for. So it's important to explicitly set this if you know which location it should be associated with and the seller has more than one location. Let's go ahead and run this now. Great, we see that our response has a code generated for us and we're going to send that to my friend's terminal device. Click sign in on the terminal. Then tap on use a device code. Enter the code that I just sent over from the command line curl response. As it logs in, we'll see it load up the terminal app. Perfect. Now that we have successfully logged into the terminal device, let's go take a look at our webhook events. We have a new event here triggered by our login that shows a device code paired event happened. And in the data section of our event, we have a device ID set, 
which is our device ID that we use to refer to the terminal device that we just connected to. Let's go ahead and copy that and set it in our environment of our command line terminal. There we go. Now that we have our device ID set, we can create a checkout. Let's go ahead and put in that same curl command that we used at the beginning of the tutorial earlier. All right, now this is the bare minimum that we would need to create a checkout. But let's hop over into the API Explorer to look at the other options we could also set if we wanted to. We can see that the amount money fields are the same ones that we saw before. Let's look at the device options. The device ID is a required field which makes sense since we need to specify which terminal we would want to send the checkout to. We do have some other fields here to change how the checkout should behave on the terminal device. We have some more options for handling tipping. So we can choose whether or not to allow tipping, whether to display an option for a custom tip amount, and also whether we want to have the tip options displayed on their own screen before showing the signature screen. The final field to note here for controlling the checkout experience is the deadline duration field. This field allows us to specify how long to wait before automatically canceling a checkout. By default, this will be set to the maximum, which is five minutes. Once you create a checkout, it will wait prompting for a payment for five minutes before automatically canceling, or if the buyer manually cancels by pressing the back arrow on the terminal device. The other fields of note and reference ID are there for you to add any additional custom information you might want for referring to this checkout. So now that we know everything we could set in the terminal, Let's go ahead and run our command to create a terminal checkout. Great, we see our checkout response. So let's take a look at my friend's terminal device. We see the device is waiting for a payment. So just tap your card there. And look, a payment has been processed. Let's just quickly go back and take a look at our webhook events. So we can see a few new events here. One for when the new checkout was created, then another for our checkout updating to a pending state. And finally, one for when our checkout is completed. We can also see here in the last event that there is a payment ID in the payment IDs array. So if we wanted to, we could use the payments API to go look up this payment. That about covers getting started with terminal API. We set up our webhooks, created a device code using the devices API, and then created a checkout using the terminal API. Although we use curl commands to trigger the checkout response today, we also have SDKs that you can use to integrate into your own application. Check out the links in the description below on where to find those. Happy coding.